Welcome to Dermatology Miscellaneous. Here, we'll explore a fascinating variety of skin conditions that don't always grab the spotlight, but are essential to understand. Today, we're diving into topics like psoriasis, lichen planus, and lichen sclerosis, uncovering what makes these conditions unique. We'll also discuss keratosis pilaris, those tiny bumps often mistaken for dry skin, and cafe au lait spots, which can sometimes be more than just a birthmark. Plus, we'll shed some light on hydronitis superativa, seborrhea keratosis, and the common yet complex rosacea. Psoriasis is a common autoimmune condition that causes the rapid growth of skin cells, leading to the development of thick red scaly patches on the skin. These patches can be itchy, painful, and sometimes crack and bleed. Psoriasis commonly affects areas such as the elbows, knees, scalp, and lower back, but can occur on any part of the body. You may also see something called ospid sign, which is pinpoint bleeding when scales are removed, and nail changes such as pitting, oncolysis, and subungual hyperkeratosis. There are different types of psoriasis. The most common type is plaque psoriasis. Other types of psoriasis are glutate psoriasis, inverse psoriasis, pustular psoriasis, and erythrodermic psoriasis. Psoriasis affects 2-3% to of the population, and it is not contagious. This condition is caused by a dysregulation of T-cell-mediated immune responses, leading to the release of inflammatory cytokines such as tumor necrosis factor alpha, IL-17, and IL-23. This cascade results in rapid keratinocyte proliferation and impaired skin barrier function. Common triggers include emotional stress, trauma to the skin called Kobner's phenomenon, infections such as streptococcal pharyngitis, especially in gutate psoriasis, cold weather, and medications like beta blockers, lithium, antimalarials, and NSAIDs. Diagnosis is primarily clinically based on history and physical examination, especially when typical lesions and distribution are present. A biopsy is rarely needed, but may be considered if lesions are atypical or unresponsive to initial treatment. In cases of gutate psoriasis, a rapid strep test or antistreptolysin O titer may help identify recent infection. If joint pain is present, imaging such as x-rays may reveal characteristic findings of psoriatic arthritis. Treatment includes steroids, phototherapy, and biologics. Management is based on the severity of the disease, typically measured by body surface area affected. For mild disease, which is considered less than 5% of body surface area, topical therapy is the first-line treatment. This includes high-potency topical corticosteroids, vitamin D analogs, coal tar, salicylic acid preparations, topical retinoids, and emollients to support the skin barrier. Moderate psoriasis, which is considered 5 to 10% body surface area, may require a combination of topical treatments and phototherapy, while severe psoriasis considered greater than 10% body surface area or any joint involvement typically necessitates systemic therapy. Systemic treatments include oral immunosuppressants like methotrexate and cyclosporin, which require regular monitoring of liver and kidney function, as well as newer agents, biologic therapies targeting tumor necrosis factor alpha, IL-17 or IL-23, such as etanercept, are now commonly used for moderate to severe psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis. Before initiating biologics, patients should be screened for tuberculosis and hepatitis B and C. Psoriatic arthritis occurs in approximately 30% of patients and often involves the distal interphalangeal joints, spine, or knees. It may precede or follow the onset of cutaneous psoriasis. Early recognition and treatment are essential to prevent joint damage. DMARDs, or biologics, are the mainstay of treatment in these patients. 